it that it is normal peripheral nerve signals uh, uh, the target is to stimulate or control an external device using brain signals. And this uh, instrument is especially interesting for those people who are suffering from severe motor disorder. And another uh, fact is that it's a powerful tool to address fundamental questions in neuroscience. Uh, here is a schematic uh, to understand how brain machine interface works. Our first uh, step is to extract signals from the brain and the signal need to be digitized and then analyzed uh, to extract exact feature and that feature or the signal uh, factors will be used to control a computer or a wheelchair or a prosthetic limb or something like that. And brain signals can be of different types of modalities. For example, it can be electrical signals, uh, which is termed as electroencephalography, or it might be magnetoencephalography, uh, emote potential, or something like that. Especially uh, the BMI, we are, uh, which are uh, already existing, uh, they are using electroencephalography. Whatever the signal form is, we know that it is generated from the neuron which is the fundamental element of our brain. Here is a figure, and uh, we know that uh, the, the blue part is the brain cell body, and the electrical impulse is generated from that cell body, and the term axon, it is to transfer the signal to other neurons. And the next neurons are uh, used to collect the uh, signal through their dendrite. If you want to have a look, uh, the signal outcome from a single neuron, this will be this type of simple electric impulse. Um, it is very easy to interpret this simple type of electrical impulse, the, but the problem is that it's a true feature of, our, of the neural network of our nervous system. Uh, and when we try to collect the electrical signal from our skull, it comes out to be this much noisy, noise-like complex signal. And obviously, it's very difficult to extract a particular signature uh, which uh, represent our total activity. All of the information, uh, whatever it is, our mental thoughts or our physical movement, uh, how we, our gesture or posture, everything is inserted in this uh, signal. Uh, for example, if we want to uh, make a bionic arm or prosthetic arm for a person who had, uh, whose arm had been amputated. We need to find out the exact signal feature which is tend to uh, need to be uh, instruct uh, arm how to move. So obviously it's a uh, difficult problem to sort out the signal features. Uh, so that's why the EEG based or electroencephalogram based uh, BCI is still in the stage of laboratory research. So researchers are trying to accomplish an efficient instrument, and one approach is to develop a, a simulated neural network and to analyze the um, morphology and their development of the signal and how signal propagate through the neural network, etc. Uh, there are different type of uh, digital tool, uh, tools that uh, used to digitize the uh, uh, genuine neural network. Here is an example. Uh, it is done with MATLAB. Uh, the figure stated as A, it's a digitized neuron. Uh, we, uh, there is uh, tools in, in MATLAB that we can uh, construct it and analyze it, analyze it step by step and uh, figure out the ex exact features uh, from a single neuron. Uh, the next slide shows a particular part of a branch of morphology. Uh, this uh, this uh, particular branch, uh, this is the first uh, uh, model uh, or simulated uh, neuron, first one, and if we want to, the de uh, want to analyze the developed signal and the propagation, we need to uh, analyze the dendritic tree. 
the second figure, the dendritic tree, is representing the colored form, and the color indicates the signal amplitudes. Uh, we can notice that the first part is purple color. Here, the signal, um, uh, the uh, action potential is a uh, completely uh, re uh, interpretable condition. But as it uh, propagating far more, it's uh, getting interrupted uh, with other signals received from uh, another neurons. So in this manner, uh, an elaborate analysis is possible uh, from the uh, simulated neural network. So uh, it uh, can be stated that digital tracing of neuronal morphology converts large amounts of imaging information uh, into a simple and compact representation which can be helpful for development of uh, efficient brain machine interface. Thank you so much. And I will then uh, request our next speaker, Vicky Yasmin, to have her uh, talk. Thank you, Krishna Pradhyus, Associate Professor, Department of EC, for presenting her paper. On the VS main, working as Assistant Professor, Department of CSE, I'm going to present my paper titled RSA and Triple Base, Triple Base Base Combined Security Approach to Ensure Strong Data Security. I'd like to emphasize that per data security, Already we have known whenever two transaction entities want to communicate with each, with each other via internet or other communication facility. We have known that internet is a public network. And whenever two transaction entities want to communicate securely, they need data security. Why? Because security has some goals. And goals are confidentiality, data integrity, data availability, and data authentication. First of all, I will highlight data confidentiality, which uh, will represent data must be um, securely transferred to the recipient without any modification, without any kind of uh, amperation of data. And data integrity ensures no modification of data. Data must be available and both the source and the destination must be authenticated in a secure manner. So that will establish trustworthiness of the, of the data communication. Data uh, can be hampered or altered or uh, these security goals uh, will be vulnerable to these types of attacks. These attacks can be categorized as passive and active attack. Active attack is an attack that can be categorized by an attacker that uh, an intruder, intruder wants to uh, input some data into the network system or as well as uh, potentially changes the data within the network system. So, uh, we are seeing that masquerading, modification, replay, and denial of service, that other types of active attack that represents data integrity and data availability, uh, consequently. Another one is passive attack, that here, the an intruder just uh, monitoring the network system, the security system, the types of data transmitting over the internet, but this will not greatly hamper on the data. Release of message content, traffic analysis done by the analytic are such types of passive attacks. So what will be the solution? How we can ensure our data security? I'm using cryptographic technique. This is a science and mathematical art of transforming messages to make them secure and immune to those types of attacks that I have described. Cryptography is a mechanism that ensures here that both the transaction entity center and receiver must exercise some algorithms. One is called encryption algorithm that is associated with the center. Another one is called decryption algorithm associated with the recipient. By implementing encryption key by the center, the message can be transformed from plain text 
intelligible something that is generated by us as sender and it will transform to ciphertext which will be unintelligible something and this unintelligible something will be transferred over the network, the internet, the public network. That's why the intruder will not understand anything without the help of encryption algorithm or any key. So, intruder must meet those parameters in order to understand the messages. So, at the recipient end, the receiver will decrypt that ciphertext in order to create plain text with the help of the key. So, types of key represents the types of cryptography. There are two types of cryptography in this world. One is symmetric cipher or symmetric cryptography, and another one is asymmetric or public key cryptography. In symmetric crypto cryptography, uh, we are seeing that both the transaction entities, sender and receiver, must share the same secret key. So one key is associated with encryption and decryption process. So a sender who wants to send messages must transform the message from plain text to ciphertext with the key that is securely shared in a manner to the recipient. And that key used will be used to decrypt the messages so that's gaining the plain text from the ciphertext. This is called symmetric because you are involved only one key. Another one is public key cryptography. And here we will see that, uh, we're seeing that plain text is converted into ciphertext, but here both the transaction entities must contain a key pair. This key pair is named private key and public key, and they are dependent on each other. Private key is generated from the public key and they are mathematically related. So, if a sender wants to communicate with a specific receiver, he or she must share her, his or her public key with the receiver. So, receiver will contain one of the parameters generated by the sender. And this is called public key cryptography involving two key. My approach is RSC and triple disk based encryption policy for ensuring data, strong data security. RSA is not after three uh, uh, scientists, uh, Ravish, Shamir, and Adelman. They developed their algorithm in 1978, and their approaches is to take two prime numbers that are not equal, and based on this prime number and following some calculations, generate two key. One is private key, and another is uh, public key. Public key is called EN parameter that is generated by this equation and private key is generated based on this equation. So we have two private key, uh, two uh, key, one is a public key EN and this key parameter will be shared to the recipient and this key, private key, will remain secret by the recipient, by the sender. And this is the process of key generation and this is the process of encryption. Uh, that was suggested by RSA and this is conventional RSA algorithm after implementing several process exponentiation of the plain text message M and by applying the public key we get our ciphertext. And this process will be reversed by exercising this equation. That is the ciphertext will be decrypted by the correlated secret key. And this secret key will generate the plain text that is shared by the sender. And another one is triple days or data encryption standard that was established in 1978 also by the IBM International Business Machine. Their approach was to apply three consecutive encryption process with three keys, three different keys to generate the ciphertext. So my approach to motivate the, to modify those approaches. Why? Because those have some flaws. Like RSA, it is very much vulnerable and currently this system is used in the smart card or strong security services because it has some flaws. 
like uh, they can't provide message integrity, they can't provide sender authentication, and uh, uh, attacker can attempt to use private key from the public key as the algorithm is open and it is slowest process. Moreover, 3DES has some flaws also and it doesn't provide user authentication, data integrity, and digital signature. My approach is, is to combine those systems to make faster communication, especially for SMS system, and to ensure user authentication, digital signature, message authentication, and uh, confidentiality. How? I'm using this lookup table to transform my uh, messages, uh, one by one character transformation, and I'm using this lookup table in order to implement my approaches. My approaches is to uh, one for encryption. Here, lots of uh, exercise or implementation, step-by-step -step implementations are involving here, like a sender must maintain a key stack. This key stack represents sender's own key, sender's uh, secret key, and a private key generated by RSA, public key generated by RSA, and the receiver's public key. There are uh, some uh, key generation, uh, key distribution process are also involved in here to get the public keys by of the uh, receiver. So, whenever a sender wants to transmit his or her message, this message is transforming into binary equivalent according to the lookup table that was presented in the, uh, my previous slide. And uh, mapping these ASCII values, each of the characters' ASCII values into binary equivalent, repeated XOR operation is performed on the binary values of the plaintiffs to generate a fixed binary values that is appended with the main messages, main message. And so we get um, our main message or plain text that is generated by the sender and the code, that is the XOR code generated by the XOR process that is appended with the main message and this content is encrypted with the users, that is sender's private key. This ensures the, uh, ensures the user authentication. That is a particular user. This uh, key represents a particular user associated with this message transmission. And whenever this ciphertext is uh, encrypted further, now uh, I'm uh, presenting again here. Uh, um, uh, see, uh, we see that uh, we see that uh, the appended text is further encrypted with the private key. This key is associated with the sender, and this represents the data authentic, uh, authenticity, user authenticity. And when encrypted the entire text, we got our first cipher text that is again encrypted with this free algorithm with the secret key. And this secret key represents the secret key encryption, and this key will be securely shared with the recipient. But how? The key general key distribution process is also involving here. This key must be shared with the receiver's uh, encrypted manner in an encrypted manner with the receiver's public key. So there are three types of encryption process: one for key encryption and one for uh, data encryption. And combining this two parameter will, uh, will transfer to the recipient. And at the recipient end, we will decrypt the messages in order to uh, reverse the uh, exercising all the processes to get the original message or plain text sent by the uh, sender. And this process, repeated process, also ensures data integrity. Actually, this is a cryptographic approach combining two systems, very much long system, requires some more time to elaborate perfectly, but I need to short my description. And uh, later on, after uh, my uh, output result of the combining two approach, I will uh, uh, told that I have to ensure the uh, security goals like data authentication, confidentiality, digital signature, and data integrity. After combining two those two approaches, I'm assuring strong security services. And that's my uh, is my proposal. Thank you very much for being here.
Now, uh, now I'd like to invite our next researcher, Sanjita Hokshoshi, lecturer of Department of CSE IST, for representing her paper on sentiment analysis and opinion mining on social media text data. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Sanjay Dahak Shoshi, lecturer, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Institute of Science and Technology. Before I start my thesis work, I, write, I would like to share, I would like to thank my thesis supervisor, Professor Dr. Shaida Rafid Madam, President OWSD, Professor Emeritus, Institute of Science and Technology. Thank you, Madam. My thesis topic was uh, sentiment analysis and opinion mining on social media text data. Do we all use any kind of social media like Facebook or Twitter? Okay, this one is for you. Because uh, what is sentiment is necessary to know because we all like any kind of post, we share any kind of post, we like, we share photos, we share videos, there's all are one kind of sentiment. How? Because whenever we write any kind of thoughts on social site, there's, do we all know that all the emotions are then calculated by Facebook team or Twitter team? Because they calculate our rights, our thoughts, and they use it as a sentiment. This is called sentiment analysis. And from sentiment analysis, there are two categories. Number one is positive or negative. What we like or what we share, is it positive or is it negative? So, for example, here is an example. Someone wrote a status on her Facebook or on his Facebook or on his Twitter site. This picture quality is amazing. So what is that? Samsung Galaxy picture quality is amazing. Is it positive or negative review? Is it positive review? So that's how calculated positive or negative review. My thesis work was to propose my thesis work, it is necessary for me to study all the existing classifiers. After studying all the existing classifiers, I used two classifiers to design my thesis work, which was SVM and name bias classifier. After using those classifiers and combining it, this was my proposed classifier, which was step one is data collection. So all the uh, social data was necessary. Then it was text preparation because both centers were not necessary for me to analyze. And then sentiment and is it positive or is it negative? And then it is necessary for me to present my output. That was my uh, flowchart of my proposed design, which is combination of two existing classifiers. Uh, because time was too short, so I have to finish my work and to present this uh, and to prepare this classifier, I, I use Python programming language and uh, we all know that. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Sandita Hoshoshi. Now I'd like to invite our next speaker, Lutfi Habiba. Her approach is to design and development of an efficient algorithm of sequential pattern mining based on a priority algorithm using association rules. Lutfi Habiba, lecturer, Department of CSE. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Lutfi Habiba, lecturer, Institute of Science and Technology, Department of Computer Science and Engineering. At first, I want to uh, thanks my supervisor, the Professor Dr. Shailar Rafiq Madam, for giving me, uh, me the opportunity to present my thesis paper on the uh, OWSD platform. I have developed an efficient algorithm of sequential pattern mining uh, based on actual algorithm using association rules. Before discussing these topics, let me talk a, a little bit about the context. There has been a lot of work in the field of data mining about sequential pattern mining. Data mining is the process of extracting informative information from huge data set. And sequential pattern mining is the field of data mining which concerns with correlated data to, uh, in a sequences database. The goal of sequential pattern mining is to discover useful and unexpected pattern in the databases. In this presentation, I will be interested by specific type of database called sequence databases. 
A sequence database contains some sequences. For example, consider the given database. Here the given database. We can see a database which is sequence uh, of item. Here, this database contains four sequences. All sequences represent some items sold in a supermarket. Each sequence represent what a customer has bought in a supermarket uh, over time. Objective. The main objective of my uh, uh, thesis is discovering frequent addresses set and discovering sequential rules reducing time and size of the database. Different of patentity methodology have been proposed for sequential pattern mining. They are approach based approaches and pattern growth based approaches. I work on approach based approaches. I also used here association rules. Association rules is used for finding the correlation between the item which is frequently occurred in the sequence database. It used two parameters support and, support and confidence. This is the existing system and this is the uh, example of the existing system. I work on the limitation of every algorithm. This is my proposed system and I uh, reduce the size of the database and uh, reduce the uh, scanning of the database and save the times. This is uh, this is the example of my proposed system. And finally, I uh, evaluate the performance of the existing system and the uh, proposed system where the total scanning of database is for a specific database uh, every uh, total scanning of database uh, scanned 170 times and in my proposed system I scan the total database 148 thank you thank you Dr. Habiba now I would like to welcome our another respected guest Lubu Kornokar sharing her views with us I am Rupur Karmakar, uh, lecturer, Department of Medical Physics and Biomedical Engineering, Gondor University, and ODA PhD member. Uh, we are grateful to all participants uh, for participating in this program. And we already informed about ODA PhD. So, 